So Ryan, tell us what's on your radar. The data from a long-running study in the UK came in yesterday, and the results were shocking, even for people who already believed that the vaccine was doing a good job protecting people from dying of COVID. The researchers, working on behalf of the UK's Office for National Statistics, studied 51,281 people who died of COVID over the six months from January to July, which included the period when Delta was surging. Overall, the UK found 640 people who had gotten both shots among those who had died, which makes up roughly 1.2%. Of those, just 248 were fully vaccinated beyond their two-week period when they got infected. The breakthrough deaths were more common among men, they found. Among those who died unvaccinated, 43.4%, or almost 19,000 people, were listed as not limited by long-term health or disability, and 25%, or more than 11,000, were listed as not clinically extremely vulnerable. That tracks with what two hospital chains recently reported, finding that between 97 and 99% of those hospitalized for COVID were unvaccinated or not fully vaccinated. Those who died, both vaccinated and unvaccinated, were more likely to be older and to be vulnerable, as we've known a long time, though the age at which people are dying has begun to fall, as the elderly have gotten vaccinated at much higher rates. At a Tampa hospital, the median age of ICU COVID patients was 46. This is a chart showing the portion of deaths among people under the age of 55. As you can see, in the beginning of the pandemic, those younger people made up a small number of those dying, but now they make up more than one of every five COVID deaths in the U.S. That's about 300 people a day, nearly all of whom thought because of their age or some other set of factors, they didn't need to get vaccinated. What about people even younger? Last week, nearly 500 people aged 35 to 44 died of COVID and roughly 200 who were between the age of 25 and 34 died. That's 700 people under the age of 45 just last week. Now, I can already hear the skeptics. Well, they probably had comorbidities like obesity or asthma or diabetes or heart disease. Well, yes, you just described basically the entire American population. Okay, fine, you say. People with comorbidities like that should probably get the vaccine, but I'm young and I'm perfectly healthy, so whether I get the shot is nobody's business but my own. I'm not putting anybody at any extra risk because vaccinated people can still get breakthrough cases and can still spread it. Except that's only half true for two important reasons. First, according to the CDC, unvaccinated people are, quote, much more likely to get infected and therefore transmit the virus. In other words, if you never catch COVID, you'll never spread it. And you're more likely to catch it if you're unvaccinated. And secondly, vaccinated people, again, according to the CDC, tend to have lower amounts of viral genetic material and are contagious for less time, meaning, quote, fully vaccinated people will likely spread the virus for less time than unvaccinated people. That means that you're significantly more likely to spread the virus to others if you're unvaccinated than if you're vaccinated. Once you understand that reality, you begin to understand that it's no longer just about you. Maybe think of it this way. Cars are dangerous. If you decide to drive somewhere, there's a chance you'll crash and there's a chance you'll hurt somebody or hurt yourself. But if you get hammered and get behind the wheel, the chance that you'll hurt somebody goes up. Now imagine if somebody who drove drunk all the time told you that their drunk driving was nobody's business because cars are dangerous even if you're sober. You'd see through that in a second. Yes, sure, cars are dangerous, but they're more dangerous if you're drunk. If somebody tells you that they're not really hurting anybody by not getting vaccinated because even vaccinated people can spread the virus, they're making the same argument that that drunk driver is making. And in both situations, people are playing the numbers. Chances are you're actually gonna get home from the bar just fine, even if you're tipsy. And there's a decent chance that even if you don't get vaccinated, you might not catch COVID. And if you do, you might not pass it on to anybody. But every time you get behind the wheel wasted, you're taking a risk, not just with your life, but with somebody else's. If you wanna make that choice, it's still yours to make, but make it with your eyes wide open, knowing that it's not just your own life, you're putting on the line. And, and Rachel, one, one thing I would add to this is that 
we talk a lot about Biden's quote unquote mandate, but actually it's a mandate that you either get, either get the vaccine or you get tested. And so I would add an exception to this that says, that, that kind of separates it from the drunk driving analogy that says, if you're getting regularly tested, let's say you really don't want to take the vaccine and you're getting regularly tested, then you're not necessarily putting other people at risk because you're going to catch the fact that you've gotten infected before you pass it on to other people. So at that point, you're really only putting yourself at risk. And then it does become more of a personal choice. But I don't know, what, what do you think? So my issue with this whole vaccine debate is that I think that, you know, from the beginning of COVID, the American people are pretty good at their own risk assessment. I think when they become really irrational and sort of, you know, deranged about it is when they feel pushed into a corner. And that has been the whole story of this vaccine rollout in my mind. It's just been name and shame and blame. And oh, by the way, even if you do the thing we want you to do, we're still going to treat still, you. You still right. can't. There's like, no yeah, cost. Still got to wear your mask. Right. Still exactly. Yeah. And I'll be totally honest. Honest, that is why I got the vaccine, right? I, I decided mm -hmm. there were two things I really wanted to do. One was travel and the other was live my life again, like normally right. without restrictions. That is, those were overwhelming factors for me. Um, as a relatively healthy person, I decided I wanted to do it for those reasons. All of this hype now, you know, that you can't do anything, you know, regardless of if you're vaccinated, and you should blame those 80 million people for, you know, every possible thing wrong under the sun, I just think is one of the most right. destructive forces I've seen yeah. in our politics lately. And so I Kim, totally so Kim, agree with you, Rachel. Yeah. yeah. And Kim, do you, do you think this yeah. messaging could work with, with vaccine skeptics to say, look, it's not mandated, you can do the tests, it's still your choice, but know that because of these d couple of factors, it's your choice, but you're, other, you're putting other people at risk as well. Do you think that that could well, get work with people? I think, I, I mean, I think definitely uh, taking away the whole demonizing, like Rachel's talking about, I agree. I think this is one of the most destructive forces I've ever seen in our country. I think it will rip us apart and it will create the whole new domestic war on terror and the terrorists are the anti-vaxxers and the insurrectionists and, you know, kind of lumping them all together. I think it's very dangerous. But um, I do think that when you take away the whole shaming and the mandating and that you must do this, you are way more likely to get people to take it. I still, however, don't believe that the vaccine is for other people. I do think that it is for yourself. I think that this UK study is very interesting, but it, we have to remember they, they have a different vaccine than us. They have AstraZeneca that's not available to us here. Um, we do know that Pfizer, which I think the majority of us took, is unfortunately wears off. So we're practically not vaccinated. I mean, I would say you're not vaccinated anymore if you got that Pfizer shot early on. You know, it, it wears off so much. And that's why they're talking about boosters. I, I don't think you should treat yourself as necessarily vaccinated in that case. And that is why uh, what we're seeing is um, we're seeing higher rates of that spread inside of those, you know, like here in Los Angeles, I believe half of our cases now are uh, fully vaccinated people and climbing each month. And so I think to your point, Ryan, they're very well, We, we're, you know, like I mentioned this yesterday, we don't really know yet that I would say the data is still pretty inconclusive on whether or not the virus spreads more readily inside of unvaccinated people. There was that one study you're talking about coming from Singapore. That was one study. But one thing that Fauci and uh, the CDC has said and what others have cited is that there seems to be more spread perhaps amongst the fully vaccinated because they're feeling more free. They're feeling, um, you know, like they're, 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 they're feeling more at liberty to just kind of do what they want. And so they might, by virtue of, of behavior, be actually spreading the virus as much, if not even more than the unvaccinated people who are being shunned by society, can't go anywhere and people don't want to be around them and whatnot. So I really, I just really think the messaging needs to be um, this vaccine does work to keep you out of the, well, I won't say it, ke it definitely keeps you out. I don't like that messaging either. It doesn't. People are getting sick. They are dying and they're fully vaccinated. You have to know that risk. Right. 200, but, 248 yeah. in six well, months. Well, and, and right. some, right. right. And, and so, and, and climbing as it seems to wear and, you know, if people aren't going to get those boosters. So I really think what we need to do is say, you've got to do this for yourself. You have to protect yourself, weigh your, assess your own risk. Um, I do think it's unfortunate people are taking it. Many, many of us feel like we have to take it just to live our lives, especially if we live in liberal cities, you know, and it's not about health and it should be about health. Anytime you're injecting anything or ingesting anything or, you know, that should be about what is the actual risk for you. Um, so, you know, that's just where I really think the messaging should be more on 
this is you do this for you make sure and grandma's going to do it for her and that was always the message in the beginning right was we got to protect the elderly and they seem to be fairly protected at this point the last thing i want to say is is this is you know kim you touched on it you know this idea that well maybe people are covid is spreading a little bit more because the vaccinated people feel freer to do things well yeah, because that's what we told them. Right. <laughs> that was the right. deal, right. right? That like, if you get the vaccine, oh, things will go back to normal. And so this constant push and pull between, oh, you did the thing and now we're moving the goalposts again. And now you have to go back home and now you have to blame all these other people. I just think it's honestly one of the biggest ro rollout disasters I've ever seen right. in terms of messaging. And I don't know how we put that toothpaste back in the tube. You know, although it's the, out now. Although the flip side of that is in central Pennsylvania uh, this, this weekend. And Lots of unvaccinated people uh, there, and and they're living their lives. Like they're they're not. There's no shunning. Uh, yeah, that's go, true. Going I'm, on in there. The, I'm in the eastern coast. You get bubble. shunned if you're wearing a mask. <laughs> right. It's like get, yeah, you know, I think it depends like, on where you live, right? Like right. Yeah. we're so, living in liberal cities, so that's right. it's right. a so, different. Right. So you, 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 a lot of places you go in this country, it looks like there's no pandemic, and so and so that actually could be contributing to spread. Well, then those in, governors in will that, get shamed. <laughs> well, right. Only the media only has time for a couple of governors right, to shame. Right. There's too there's too many for them to keep up with. That's right. And we'll actually be talking about Ron DeSantis later in the show. But first, right. Rachel, Speaking look, looking yeah. forward to your radar.